Welcome to another installment in the Process Hacking series. This time around, we'll be wrapping things up by covering a crucial concept that I skimmed over previously, that is of data representation, especially as it is an issue that you'll run often into when attempting to hack process memory yourself. The question is, how is data represented in the process memory and why is this knowledge so important? I will try to show some surprising problems that may arise from this issue alone. So far we tried to change the behavior of a process by changing the process memory. It went something like this. Step 1. We identified some output data of a process that we wanted to change. For example, as last time, the health value of our hero Soma. Step 2. We scanned the address space of the game process by narrowing down the address candidates of which we assumed the address of the health value resided in. And step 3. We finally were able to change it by replacing it with the value we wanted. At each of these steps, we run into the issue of data representation. So it's such a big issue. So where should I start? Mind the play on words, that is, what is there to be addressed? Well, first of all, we saw that with peak data, we can fetch process memory given an address as an index. But what is indexed here? What does a single memory address point to? Well, most computers are byte addressable. That is, the common denominator is a single byte. Each memory address points to a single byte. So let me illustrate this on familiar ground. So again, we have Castlevania. <clears throat> and we already found the health uh, address. So what do I mean that this particular address, if we were to peek it from um, memory, peek data, this address here, like so. So what do I mean that this particular address refers to a single byte? Well, look at the return value of peak data. It surely is bigger than a single byte, but that's a property of peak data that it always returns the byte pointed to by the address and the following next seven bytes for a total of 64 bits. So this means that this number here is um, spans from the health address byte to the next seven bytes, and then we interpret the whole byte region as a single number. So this is the hexadecimal representation, and that's the decimal representation. So you might have seen me uh, use uh, the hexadecimal representation a lot. So why is that? Well, that's because of its neat um, property. That is, if you look at it with your naked eye, then the first two digits of a hexadecimal number always represent a single byte. So this 12 here is the first byte, the zero one is the second byte and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so if I were to read from the next address, this one here, look what happens if I align the address before it with it. You can see here, that's the first byte, right? The first two digits and the next one, they, they are exactly the same. So this health address refers to this 12 here and this health address plus one refers to the zero one here and both read the subsequent, uh, the following bytes. I also have this neat function here, uh, read proc mem byte. And if I were to actually uh, feed it this health address value, it will just return the byte itself, this two digit hexadecimal representation. And the same thing if I read the next one should be this um, zero one here, <clears throat> like so. So why is this useful to know? Well, you see our health value currently is 200, uh, 274. So if I were to, and it seems to be represented in, me uh, in memory by this 112. So if I translate it, indeed it is. And because with the naked eye, we can see that these two bytes uh, seem to be represent the health value. We, we know that only the bytes next to each other can form a single value. That's how it usually is. So if this leading zero here, and there's this A3, we already know that the, the number 112 already represents the health value. So we know that, that this 8 A3 is no longer part of the health value. And corollary, the health value is only represented by these two bytes. It's a two byte value. So let's go a little bit into this. And by the way, cover another um, 
concept that is of value representation. So if we only have four bytes, uh, excuse me, two bytes, and they're represented by four digits, then the biggest number representable should be this one here, right? So F, since F is the biggest uh, uh, digit of hexadecimal numbers, so this should be the biggest health value that we can represent. So let's try to poke this data in there, like so. Let's do this and let's uh, see up here if it will re increase to the biggest number. By the way, this number should be 65,000. So let's detach from it and see if the value increases. Huh? What's happening here? It goes down. It goes down to minus one. Now, why is that? Let's attach to it again. So that's strange, right? It goes to minus one. So first of all, a half value represented by a negative number? That's weird. But the thing is, this value FFF, if we were to express it as, as bits, we can do this by this format directive, B, it is just 16 ones in a row. And with a little bit of uh, background knowledge in value representations, especially of negative numbers, we can tell that this representation is very probably the two's complement representation. That's a the ideal representation to store positive and negative numbers in memory. So that values that start, that span two bytes, and the first byte starts with a one bit, then the number is always going to be negative. And it's a little bit unintuitive. As we count down these ones, so like, so like one, and then like this, it, it will grow towards uh, smaller and smaller, uh, bigger and bigger negative numbers. But the biggest negative number is going to be this with all zeros, like so, I think. So the leading one represents that we are dealing with negative numbers and all zero will be the biggest negative number. In this case, um, well, let's look it up, what it will be. So we can use a uh, instead of x, which is hexadecimal, we can use b to directly write a bit, uh, the, the bits into, mem into memory. Detach from this, and we grow and grow uh, towards further negative numbers. So let's look this up. It's going to be minus 32,768, and this happens to be half of what uh, ff can actually represent, 65,000. So that's a two's complement representation. It, it might be just a different representation as well. It might be just going from zero to 65,000, but for whatever reason, this health value happens to also have place for negative numbers. So let's see what happens if I can take damage now. It keeps on increasing. Oh, that's weird. It keeps and keeps on overflowing. Okay. If I do stop, oh, it goes to a positive number. Ah, so I took damage and it further decreased my health. And because the, the, the number that I'm have uh, that I'm representing the health uh, with is this one here, so it went down. If I do minus one to this particular number, the, the one will go down to zero and it will kind of go here, like place some bits there. So it will overflow. So it overflows from the negative numbers into the positive numbers and I have 32,705. Yeah, so. So to sum things up, process memory is not just some uh, binary blob, but rather it is organized in bytes. It is a mosaic of bytes. And each and every one of these bytes has its own uh, memory address. And this is what we use in this peak data and poke data calls. And then values such as the value 100, if we view it is as a decimal, it is already an, a, an abstraction for this underlying byte representation. So as we saw with uh, Castlevania, the value minus one was represented by two bytes filled with ones with this FF representation. So this was this, uh, this peculiar two's complement, uh, complement representation. But as we also see, FF, the, this representation can also refer to the number 65,000. What is also possible that this might also uh, represent a particular string. So there's a, uh, actually a way when we have a health value like 265, is that in memory, there's a, a, it might be represented as a string precisely to full cheat engines, so it is harder to find the value in memory. 
So if there are some arithmetic operations performed on it, it is actually parsed into parsed to an integer. The arithmetic operation is applied, and the uh, the, the result is stored back so that if we want to find this particular value, we'd need to, to find the, the the character string with two, six, and five in there in a row. So this is also a, a result of this underlying binary representation. And finally, when we try to write a, a abstraction layer on top of all of this, which is exactly what peak data and poke data is, their abstraction for the p trace calls, when we feed values into them, like we saw with this minus one or F or this bits directly, we need to remember that in the background, they still have to deal with these binaries. And that about uh, sums it up. That about covers the major issues of data representation pertaining process hacking. This video took a long time to develop, but it was rather a problem of finding the time to make it, so ultimately I scrapped some things and ideas I wanted to cover so that I could finally finish the video. Nevertheless, in the next video we will focus entirely on hacking the game Rogue Legacy from the get-go. We will see that it is a fitting final boss for our series, as it will break our model of how we understand processes, and we'll have to develop a new approach and new tools in order to take it on. I'll leave you with that. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next video. Toodles!